Finally, after weeks of waiting for the weather to cooperate, it's time for today's challenge. I've been really looking forward to this one. Pressure washing. Now this is an electric pressure washer. I've used gas pressure washers for years. In fact, I have one, but I don't usually get it out because it's kind of a pain. You gotta go get the gas. You gotta do the oil exchange. You gotta maintain it. For some reason, I'm sensing that electric pressure washers are a lot easier to use. You put them away, you start them back up. So when I saw that one was on sale for half price, I figured it was time to give electric pressure washers a chance at the game. The other thing we're going to evaluate is do you really need a Super Mondo pressure washer? In other words, this is 1600 pounds. Do you really need something more than that? I'm sensing that this guy is going to be able to do the job. So we're going to put this guy to a test today on a deck that hasn't been pressure washed for years. Why? Because the gas powered pressure washer is just a pain. So let's go to a top-down shot and see what's in the box. Here we go. Again, very excited about this. Been looking for an opportunity to use an electric pressure washer and just waiting for the right price. Got some instructions, always helpful. Part of the wand. Here's the other part of the wand. We'll assemble that. Here's the unit itself. Wow. Incredibly lightweight. Here's the hose. And so it's time to put the box to the side. Well, first impressions are incredibly lightweight. Looks like it's got a little reset test circuit breaker built into this guy. And it makes sense if you're working around water. Strap. I'm really amazed at how light this is. All it is is a pump. Has some interesting, pretty basic starting procedures. Hook it up to the water, hook up the wand, steady flow. Wow, so much easier. What is this? Oh, register, gotta do that. Okay, so this is for soap. I'm just curious, I gotta weigh this thing. The cord appears to weigh more than the pressure washer unit itself. So let's see what we got here. 9.2 pounds, which happens to be 4.15 kilograms. So we'll weigh the cord too, just out of curiosity. Okay, the cord is 0.9 kilograms or 2.1 pounds. You got a little brass fitting here. Just pull down on it, put that guy in place, boom. Let's evaluate the instructions here. Pretty basic, I already did that. All right, so these guys look identical on both ends, which is good because then there's no fusion. Twist this little plastic retainer cap off, push this guy in there, and just twist it tight. And hook up the other side. Push it in a little bit and then start twisting it down. It's a little loose there. Not sure how I feel about that. On both of these fittings, this one and this one, you can hand tighten and you feel like it's really at the stop and firm, which I kind of like in that part of the design. Here it's got a nice little gauge, which is helpful for concrete, brick, masonry, siding, gutters, house, fencing, deck. This is the turbo nozzle. I guess there's another nozzle if you want to do the soap, although I don't see it anywhere. Wow, that's interesting. The separate nozzles are right here. So that's pretty cool. So it seems to come with three nozzles. The high pressure one, and by the way, when you put it in place, you gotta push on this end to reset this brass piece, which I think is pretty important. You have an abrasive nozzle and a gentle low pressure soap nozzle. Four different parts of the deck we're gonna do the bottom structural area, the stairs, the top, and the railings. Now it's time to take it outside and give it a test run. The hose is connected here. The power hose is connected here to the gun. This is the 15 degree nozzle. This is the Uber high pressure nozzle. And they said you should only use that on masonry. 
And since we're doing deck and wood, we're going to use this nozzle here. Now the first thing you need to do is take this nozzle off, turn on the water, and get it so it's streaming out this end. And what you're trying to do is take the air out of the line. All right, there we go. You want all the hose, including the garden hose, to be unkinked. And this, you can see it's all curled up. It's going to take a while to stretch that out. Okay. And here you can see the fan unpowered. All right. Not 15 degrees yet, but really haven't gotten it. And it's relatively safe at this point. I was amazed at how long this extension cable is. We're gonna run it to the top of the deck, plug it in. You wanna make sure this is elevated and doesn't get wet, obviously. And then it's time to turn the puppy on and see how we do. Okay, water's connected. Let's see how loud it is. Wow. So, much, much quieter then it's other version and just for a safety feature this is the red lockout recommend that you always have that down when you're moving things around so you're not inadvertently triggering this and potentially hurting somebody by the way this is an unsponsored review I bought it with my own money to give you an honest review on whether or not this product works so since the lighting is particularly good here we're just going to show you what it looks like on the stairs water full on hit the button it's on. Okay, a couple thoughts here. It does have good pressure. It seems to cycle itself a little bit. It's much quieter. You can kind of see the difference between the pressure wash side and the non-pressure wash side. And the closer you get it, the more pressure you put on per square inch. In other words, when you're out here, when you're farther away, you get more of a fan, the less pressure. And when you take your hand off the trigger, it shuts down the power. You're not keeping the power on all the time like you do with a gas-powered pressure washer. I've repositioned the setup on the deck. Here is where it plugs in. Now, one of the things I thought would be interesting is to find out how much decibels this guy puts out. I downloaded an app. I'll stop talking and you'll see what the standard noise is. 50, maybe. Now, let's turn on the machine. Squirt it and get what the DB is. Round 70, I think I saw. Okay, we're a further distance away. More realistic. Here's the DB. Here we go. Sixty-eight. Whenever you're using any kind of equipment, you probably should wear foamies, things you stick in the air to reduce the amount of sound. I'm impressed how little noise comes out of this machine as compared to the gas version. My neighbor over there pressure washed his deck with a standard gas one and boy, I could hear it all the way in the house across the other side of the house. This one, much more ninja quiet. So I decided I would just go around and just do sample shots so you can see the difference and how well this pressure washer works, or doesn't. So here you can see a band that I pressure washed right here. Not bad. Here you can see the railing pieces. Look at this guy here compared to its friends on either side. Amazing. This guy was particularly nasty with green goo. Took it right out. Oh, by the way, if you want to know what this is, this is my anti-critter barrier so that they don't poop on railings. I'll post up there where you can see that video. Here you can see the steps. 
a significant improvement prior to being cleaned. I haven't done these steps in about 10 years. I know, I should have done it much sooner than this. Here's the structural side of the stairs and another part of the railing. Pretty significant. This had black goo on it and it just rubbed it right out. So what do I think of this electric pressure washer? I like it a lot. It's so much quieter than its gas counterparts. So much less maintenance and 1600 PSI. It's not too little, it's not too much, it's just right. It gets the job done and yet it won't dig into wood and composite decking that some higher pressure washers might do. Thumbs up and comments, always appreciated. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in the evaluation of home products, sports gear, electronics, making and breaking things, designs of all kinds, I even do costumes, cosplay, and props, check out my channel and please subscribe. Because you never know what you're going to see.